What's up, you sweaty nerds and greasy degenerates? A patch 1.5 special programming just occurred earlier today, so it's time to find out whether some of these characters are worth pulling for or not. Maybe we should save for the future. Let's go ahead and dive into Huo Huo, because I think Huo Huo is probably going to be a very important character in the game's meta. Let's talk about it. All right, I'm going to try to be completely honest with you guys here. I think that Huo Huo is the character from 1.5 with the highest value overall. Sure, every account needs something different, so maybe Huo Huo is not for you, but just from a meta standpoint, from a team synergy standpoint, from a theory crafting standpoint, Huo Huo has value, 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 and can work on basically any team. Allow me to explain why I think this way throughout the video. First, we're gonna go into her kit and abilities, then we will go over her lore and in conclusion kind of give you my thoughts on what I think of the character as a whole. So let's dive into the main course, the meat and potatoes for Kit. So Hoho is a wind type healer on the path of abundance. Her basic attack is nothing special as of now. It's called Banner Storm Caller and deals wind damage to a single enemy target. Again, nothing too special there from what I see. Hoho's skill is called Talisman Protection. And it's a very unique healing ability. It's a blast heal, healing a target ally and the allies on either side of that target ally. So a total of three allies. However, unlike blast damage attacks, this is a blast heal to your allies. And it manages to heal all three allies equally, making it far better than normal blast effects that have a reduced amount to the enemies on either side. It heals all three allies equally. Although her healing is attached to a skill, it is very effective, unlike Natasha's skill, for example, that only heals one ally at a time, making it very worthy of the skill point that it costs, and it also helps her build her ultimate faster. Speaking of her ultimate, Huo Hua's ultimate is called Tail Spiritual Domination, and this banger of an ultimate increases allies' attack and gives them energy so it's a lot like ting yun's ultimate however it's spread to all allies but players so far are a bit confused on this they're acting like this is a ting yun replacement stop the cap stop right there guys get some help ting yun's ultimate gives her more energy and more or sorry it gives you more energy and more attack than ho ho does let's just let's just say that this is not a replacement moment, but rather an opportunity to combo with both Ting Yun and Huo Huo. Imagine you ultimate with your main DPS, then ult with Ting Yun, buffing her DPS and giving them energy, then ulting with Huo Huo and buffing and giving energy again. You can almost ult back to back, and with a character like Jing Li Yu, you have a second action after your ultimate. You might be able to literally double ultimate with an effect like this. So no, this isn't a Ting Yun replacement. This is a Ting Yun synergy. Don't get it twisted, guys. It would appear that Huo Huo fills roughly a third of your energy bar with this ult. However, I can't say with 100% certainty exactly how big the buff is or the exact amount of energy in like 100% certainty, right? Just be aware the buff and the energy are technically less than Ting Yun's for an example. Her ultimate also has maybe the coolest animation in the game, I'm just saying. Um, moving on to Ho Ho's talent. Um, her talent is called Possessed Ethereal Metaflow. After she uses her skill, she receives an effect called Sacrifice Life. Allies will regain HP at the beginning of their turns and when they use their ultimates. So this is a lot like part of Lynx's talent and part of Locha's talent sort of combined. Not as powerful as Locha's, it would seem, but it should still be plenty of passive healing, and we all know how good passive healing effects are because they don't use skill points. Again, allies will regain HP at the beginning of their turns and when they use their ultimate. So it's not quite the same as Lynx and Locha's talents combined. It's like part of each of their talents combined. Anyways, Huoho's technique is called Fiend Impeachment of Evil and basically casts fear 
on enemies, causing them to run away from you. Um, it's not called fear, but it acts the same as a fear effect. Instead, Hoyoverse decided they'd want to call it horror because they don't want to pe they don't want people to realize that they just stole the fear effect from MMO RPGs. Anyway, when you attack a fear-struck enemy and enter battle, there is a chance that the enemy will take a debuff, causing 25% less attack on that enemy for two turns. But it is not guaranteed, so just be warned. All right. So let's go into some of Hoho's lore, and then I'll give you guys kind of like a conclusion of what I think. Hoho is a magnet for evil. The Ten Lords Commission take advantage of this and use her as a lure. She basically has the worst luck on the Xian Zhao. Her tail was taken over by a Heliobus when she was young, causing all of this. This is when the Ten Lords Commission took her under their wing because she had the power to subdue Heliobus. This power is incredible and has a lot of value to the Ten Lords Commission. So she became a Ten Lords Commission judge in training. And this might explain why even though the other judges so far are only four-star characters, and Huahua is actually a five-star character, which is kind of weird because she's only a judge in training. But I think this further shows her value and her value that will come over time. Evil literally follows her everywhere she goes, and perhaps this is how we will get introduced to Argenti, since Argenti appears from the 1.5 promo to us to be an enemy, at least at first. That's just my speculation, but looking at the 1.5 promo footage, that is very heavily the vibe that I'm getting. That's kind of like what they're sort of suggesting here. But in all honesty, I have nothing that I can say that actually confirms this theory. However, I think it is safe to say we can assume he will not necessarily be on our side, at least at first. Don't take my word on that. I have no idea how the story will actually go. Anyways, Woho is afraid of ghosts and Heliobus, and it is literally her job to eradicate them, which is hilarious to me, and I'm all about it. So in conclusion, I think that Huohu is an incredibly powerful character and probably has the best value for the characters coming in 1.5 because she has the potential to solo sustain as well as provide you buffs. This is the first healer that is like this in the entire game and I think because of this she will be the most valuable healer in the game so far. There's no other healer like this. She won't be healing as well as a character like Locha so her sustainability is not as high, but her buffs are incredibly valuable. I think this will make her the most valuable healer in the entire game, because as long as you survive, the buffs are really what you want, right? You'll get faster clears with someone like Hua Hua on your team. You won't be as tanky, you won't have as much sustainability, but you will have more damage output. This is simply a fact. So in my personal opinion, I value Huoho a lot. I think she's going to probably be the most valuable healer and quote unquote best healer in the game when she arrives. If you need a character that can help you solo sustain or like get you through swarm disaster, maybe she's not your girl. But in every other environment, I think that Huoho will probably be better. That's just my personal opinion. Flame me in the comments if you think I'm wrong. Anyways, if you found this video helpful or informative in any way, shape or form, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. Because if you do, Anya might let you touch her butt. Anyways, peace out.